Thank you, Leighton. Where's the uh, where's the oh. button? <laughs> And I won't be uh, talking about rocket science. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm very, very flattered to be on a group of speakers here that uh, has been so wonderful and, and the scientists themselves. I look at the work and I just I collect the data basically is what I do. And so I'm very flattered by that. I don't claim to be a climate scientist. Uh, I'm a physicist. And I've spent my life analyzing data and uh, assessing data, forming uh, my opinion, drawing conclusions, and sometimes those conclusions did lead to very critical decisions. Uh, I've been a pilot for the last 60 years, so I've always been familiar with weather data. For the last 20 years or so, my interest has been on really on the climate data, and uh, <clears throat> my friends on this panel right here will be talking about climate science and I will be sharing my opinion uh, for what it's worth to you. And I like what, uh, you probably remember what Socrates once said. He said, there's something less than knowledge and more than ignorance. It's called opinion. It is not as good as knowledge, but it is a whole lot better than ignorance. Well, for the last 40 years, I've been asked many, many times, probably thousands of times, just how fragile our planet appears from space. Well, it does work. <clears throat> uh, that's the Apollo 17 uh, picture, of course. Uh, <clears throat> well, what impressed me from orbit was the beauty of our planet. And I was always amazed at our ability to survive changes in climate for billions of years. And uh, after I came back, as a matter of fact, I was one of the founders of something we called the Earth Awareness Foundation. That was way back in 1970. We've long known that the sun, the oceans, Variations in the Earth's orbit are the principal drivers of our changing climate. Our life has evolved by adapting to those changes. And we also all know that weather is one of the least predictable fields of science. Until about 30 years ago, climate science was a respected field of science. And that was when they began to ignore scientific discipline. The uh, Today, global warming alarmists would have you believe that climate change is a threat to our civilization, when what it really is is a political movement that's disguised as science. As skeptics, we realists are fighting to avoid the impact of actions taken based on bad science that will be devastating to all of us and to our uh, country and our planet. Well, back in the 1980s, a small group of people focused on a small temperature increase since the Industrial Revolution. And they hypothesized that the tiny amount of carbon dioxide that humans was generating was controlling the temperature of our planet. Now I hesitate to call them scientists because they abandoned scientific principles with their speculation about the cause of future temperature changes. Uh, <clears throat> Those alarmists, they would have you believe that carbon dioxide levels are abnormally high. Two, that higher levels are, of carbon dioxide are bad for humans. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and that uh, it will raise the Earth's temperature. Well, warmer temperatures will put humans and our planet at risk, and that four, humans are capable of overriding the natural forces to control the Earth's temperature. Today, the public doesn't know what to believe about humans controlling the temperature of our planet. Now, this is a global warming war that's being fought on many fronts. And it's not just the scientific front. There's also the political, the media, the public perception front, education, and other areas. Data from the past 600 million years shows that both temperature and carbon dioxide levels are near their historical minimum levels. 
The last time they were simultaneously at such low levels is about 300 million years ago. And about 550 million years ago, the carbon dioxide level was, let's just say, 12 to 15 times higher than it is today. Today, we're experiencing the longest and coolest interglacial period on record. And the next ice age is, in fact, long overdue. Even in the past 10,000 years, as you can see there and in other presentations here in the last two days, there have been many periods when the temperature was higher than it is today. In spite of this reality, the alarmists challenged the accepted theory of climate change. And for a new hypothesis to be accepted as a, as a theory in the scientific arena has to meet two requirements. It must be confirmed by considerable evidence, and it has to survive all attempts to disprove it. Well, without satisfying either of these criteria, the alarmists have convinced most of the public that their hypothesis was an accepted scientific theory. Well, as you know, alarmists have also been pushing a correlation between temperature and carbon dioxide levels. As you know, correlation is not causation. But if it were, for example, take a look at the correlation of temperature with the carbon dioxide or uh, temperature with solar activity over the last 130 years. Which would you vet for? If you look at correlation of temperature with, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I just mentioned that. The only thing that the alarmists can cite in support of their hypotheses are mathematical models that they themselves developed to prove that humans caused carbon dioxide was the dominant factor controlling our planet's temperature. Well, models are based on assumptions. That's opinions. Models are not data. And their climate models have never successfully predicted anything. After years of searching myself, I have not found one piece of empirical evidence that man-made carbon dioxide has a significant impact on our climate. Today, human-caused carbon dioxide is 0.001% of our atmosphere, or about 400 parts per million. Alarmists, as you know, are predicting disaster if it reaches 800 parts per million. Well, let me put this number in context for you from where I lived for two weeks. The Apollo Command Module was a closed environment of 100% oxygen, and we monitored and controlled the pressure of the oxygen and also the carbon dioxide level. And our carbon dioxide alarm went off at 3,000 parts per million. I don't necessarily recommend that level for full-time living, but today in the International Space Station, uh, that level is up at 5,000 parts per million. And for submarines that stay submerged for three or four months at a time, I believe, I've been told at least, that their level, their alarm goes, is set at 8,000 parts per million. Well, with history, facts, and scientific discipline, all on the side of realists, then why is human-caused global warming still so debatable? Well, alarmists refuse to accept that today's weather is consistent with our historical climate variability. And they are also loath to admit that we humans have little, very little control over natural forces. And while the realists are winning on the scientific front, that's us. There's, to me, there's no question about the scientific front. We're, it's being won by the realists. Alarmists, they do seem to be winning in the court of public opinion and the political arena. They are also pushing humans controlling climate change in schools and universities. And they also seem to control the semantic high ground. Human-caused global warming has evolved into climate change. Ridiculous. At this stage, the battle for public perception, 
seems more critical than the scientific front. <coughs> Excuse me. And the scientific fight is, uh, as I say, I believe that's already won by us. The media and the public, most politicians, well, they may not be scientific, but that does not prevent them from playing a major role in this debate. Journalists influence a great many readers. And most journalists are aggressively pushing humans causing global warming. We need, all of us in this room, we need to educate the media and the public priority by pushing some points that are not scientific. Today's disagreement is not about climate change. It's about the cause of climate change. Points you need, I think, that you need to be making. Two, we should always refer to alarmist claim, not as uh, global uh, human caused, <coughs> excuse me, we should always refer to it as human caused global warming. Human caused global warming, not as AGW, climate change, or climate disruption. Three, we should be telling the media, the politicians, and the public to not simply buy what others are telling them. Tell them to examine the data themselves. Four, we should make it plain that alarmists are pushing a hypothesis. That is their guess based on their interpretation of their observations. It is not a theory. Alarmists have not even come close to meeting the criteria for a theory. Historical data is not just another opinion, and the public should look at the historical data before forming their own opinion. Now, personally, after years of looking, I have not found one piece of evidence that supports the alarmist hypothesis. Here are my conclusions and opinions. Well, OK. <clears throat> Based on historical data, there is no reason to be concerned about today's temperature or the temperature trend. Two, human-produced carbon dioxide plays a minuscule role in global temperature when compared to the natural factors. Three, there is no reason to believe that today's carbon dioxide and temperature levels are the ideal ones. Higher temperatures and higher carbon dioxide levels will save more lives then lower levels will. Five, it is a fantasy to think that humans can have a significant influence on global temperatures. Now, if any of you are concerned about one of the greatest scientific hoaxes of all time, check the data and form your own conclusions. Don't just buy the opinions of others, and that includes me. Oh, wait, I do have one piece of positive evidence that it's been warming for a while. Uh, there it is. <laughs> That's the only proof of global warming I've been able to find. <laughs>